What's the foundation of building a retirement plan? When we're looking at somebody's financial situation, we start with their income. I think everybody's pretty comfortable. They have an idea what your income is going to be. And with your income, you have to fill four buckets. The first bucket is the retirement bucket. Now, um, I put it at the top, not necessarily because that is your top priority. I mean, for a lot of people, that is their top priority. But I put it at the top because there's no question that of all the different things that you have to fund, this is the most expensive. People talk about kids being expensive. And, and kids are expensive, you know? They, they, you gotta put them to school and blah, blah, blah. And you know, they're about, they cost about this much. And retirement costs about that much, right? Because you know, retirement, you're talking about you know, supporting your standard of living for maybe you know, 20 or 30 years, you know, a long time. It's a much, 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 it's, it's by far the largest financial transaction you have to accomplish. So, so we fill this box. Then the next box is what I call long-term goals. So for both of these, we're going to have to make some calculations. We're, we'll, we'll talk, uh, uh, most of the talk is going to be about what do we need to do to figure out how much we need to put into that box. But the next box here, long-term goals, what, those are things like, um, well, college, uh, maybe you, know, you want to buy a home, so you need a down payment. Some people said they want to buy a boat. It's, it's, it's the big ticket items that, that, are, you know, that, that require some saving. Okay? And you have to have some calculations to tell you how much from my income needs to go into this box. So as I draw this, I want you to visualize, you know, those little fountains that you see in the house or, you know, that, that the water kind of flows from level to level. That, that's what we're doing here. So we start with some income, and the first level we're going to fill up is this retirement box. And then, assuming there's anything left, we have to fill up the long-term goals box. Right. Then our next box is what I call non-monthly, M-O-N-T-H-L-Y, expenses. Now, some people need this box, and other people don't need this box. Um, but this is, if you're, if you're the kind of person that when you get a big property tax bill or a big insurance bill, you know, it, it, you, you, your cash flow completely goes, you know, to pot, um, you need to have a non-monthly expenses box. And, and a lot of my clients need a non-monthly expenses box so that when, you know, the $12,000 property tax bill comes in, instead of freaking out, they've taken $1,000 a month, every month, put it into the box, and what do you know? End of the year, $12,000. No problem with the cash flow. The other people, they, they operate with more of a cash cushion and they're more comfortable. They kind of like have an intuitive feel how these things work. And they don't need this box. But I put it here because a lot of people do. So that's, that's the third box that we need to fill up. And then the last box are your monthly living expenses. Okay, so, pause. Right. What's wrong with this picture? It's upside down, that's right. But, and that's what everybody says, right? It's upside down, it's backwards, right? But, but in fact, this is not upside down. This is right side up. This is, the, this is the only way that is reasonable to look at this problem. Because what it does is it, is it very easily tells you the consequences of your decisions. I mean, how do most people operate, right? Well, they, they, they take care of their monthly expenses and Somehow they manage to figure out how to take care of the non-monthly expenses. And then the long-term goals in the retirement, well, those kind of, well, they're off in the future. They're off in the future until they're not in the future anymore, right? And, and then it's a very uncomfortable situation. I mean, as, I mean, I, I get people that come into my office, and, and really the only thing I can say is you got to work till you die. Because that's what it is, right? There's no alternative, right? And, and I don't like that. I don't like that feeling. I don't like the feeling as a person, and I don't like that feeling from a business because it means that there's no business there for me either, right? But as a person, I don't like having to tell that to somebody. And the nice thing about this methodology 
is, if we know what the income is and we come down here to the monthly expenses, let's just say that monthly expenses, somebody needs $10,000. And we subtract out what we need for retirement from the income. We subtract out what we want for the long-term goals for the income. We take out our non-monthly expenses and we wind up with $8,000. Right? Well, what's it tell us? We got three choices. Right? One is we can reduce our monthly expenses from $10,000 to $8,000. That's a reasonable choice. Two, we can increase our income. That's a good choice, <laughs> but not always practical. Right? Or three, we can change our goals. Right? So if we have a goal that we want to retire at 65, and we see that, that there's not enough money flowing down to the monthly expenses, well, we change that to 70. Right? And what happens? Well, if we change our retirement goal from 65 to 70, we actually kind of get the double dip because we have five more years of accumulating savings, and we have five, more, five less years that we're going to live in retirement. So if we do that, then the amount of money that has to go into the retirement bucket is less. And you know, following our little fountain example, then, then we get to have more go down to the monthly. Or you can say long-term goals, college. Well, instead of saying, I want to send my kid to Harvard, you do the right thing, and you say, I want to send them to Cal Berkeley. Right? <laughs> Better education. <laughs> Less money. <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, or, or sometimes it becomes a harder question, right? I, I live in Los Angeles, and, um, you know, the public schools are, uh, they leave something to be desired, right? And so a lot of people feel they need to send their kids to private school. And you send your kids to private school, that's expensive. And you have three kids, and they're all going to private school from K through 12. I mean, you, you, it's, it's, it's a killer, right? And so, um, I mean, I, I, I regularly talk to doctors. You know, they're making, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year, have three kids in private school. They will never be able to retire. 